Recently, I played both Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2 for the first time in a long while and, well, they're pretty good games in my opinion. But it got me thinking, which one is the superior game? There are many people online who think one game is better than the other and vice versa, so I thought I'd share my thoughts on what I think the better Sonic game is by comparing them using various criteria. I tried to be relatively unbiased while writing this, but inevitably, some of the comparison points of these games came down to a matter of opinion for me, so I wasn't able to completely escape subjectivity here. Nevertheless, I still wanted to do this comparison to get my opinion out there and have some fun while doing it. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing I'd like to discuss is the graphics of both games. In regards to comparing the graphics, I could either look at the original Dreamcast versions of the games or the GameCube re-release versions and compare those. For this comparison, I'm going to compare the original Dreamcast versions of the games, since the GameCube re-release graphics, while not the most garish in Sonic Adventure 2, look pretty darn ugly in Sonic Adventure 1, despite the higher def models. In particular, I'm going to be using footage from the Steam versions of the games with a Dreamcast conversion mod for Sonic Adventure 1 and various fixes for Sonic Adventure 2, since these are the ports I have easy access to at the moment and they can be considered a souped up version of the originals if you have the right mods installed. Now, before I go more in depth in my comparison of the graphics, I want to preface this by saying that I know graphics don't inherently determine if a game is superior or not. Plenty of great games exist nowadays with rudimentary graphical styles, but I thought I'd use it as a point of comparison here, just for the sake of completeness. Now, originally, I believe Sonic Adventure 2 was the obvious winner graphically, but after playing through both games for a while to get footage for this video, it occurred to me that Sonic Adventure 1's graphics, while not as high fidelity as its successor, had some really vibrant and lively colors, while the second game, despite it still having a lot of great looking graphical elements, falls short in this department, with there being a large amount of darker color palettes and watered down industrial areas. Having a darker and more low-key color scheme isn't inherently a bad thing, but I think the brighter colors in Sonic Adventure 1 are more captivating than the colors in the second game. Despite this fact though, there are definitely some things that Sonic Adventure 2 does way better than Sonic Adventure 1, like the improved character models and also the motion captured cutscenes, which look a lot more fluid compared to the stiff Sonic Adventure 1 cutscene animations. I feel these elements make Sonic Adventure 2's graphics a bit better than the first games overall, though like I said, I do enjoy the colors in Sonic Adventure 1 more and can understand why people might prefer that over the improved graphics of the second game. Next up is comparing the two games' soundtracks. Now, I just want to say that both games have really good soundtracks with a bunch of bangers, but which one is superior? In determining which game's soundtrack is better, I opted to look at how the game's soundtracks are used in the context of each game respectively, instead of looking at the entirety of each soundtrack cover to cover, since that would take a lot of time and that isn't really the direction I wanted to go for with this comparison. Anyways, after considering how each soundtrack is used within the context of each game's story and gameplay, I'd have to say that Sonic Adventure 2 shines a bit brighter than Sonic Adventure 1's soundtrack in regards to its diversity in-game. Sonic Adventure recycles many of the same tracks within levels and cutscenes, and while Sonic Adventure 2 may potentially do this occasionally, the promiscuous nature of the soundtrack makes everything sound fresh and new. The different songs that play during the various levels you tackle with each character in Sonic Adventure 2 demonstrates more Sonic variety than the first game's very similar level themes between characters. In Sonic Adventure 2, some themes that help diversify the sound besides Sonic's proverbial electric guitar riffs are Knuckles' iconic rap-oriented level themes, Rouge's jazzy level themes, and Tails and Eggman's more industrial sounding tracks. That is why, for the reasons stated above, Sonic Adventure 2 wins out on sound. Alright, now we move on to both of these games' voice acting and scripts. And when I mean scripts, I mean the diction of the dialogue and how the story of the game is articulated by the characters, not the quality of the story itself, which I will get to later. For the script comparisons, I will be using the official English translations found within the US releases of each game, since I have pretty much no experience with the Japanese scripts, and I feel like the translated scripts are the versions a lot of English-speaking Sonic fans remember. Honestly, the voice acting and dialogue is charmingly cheesy in both Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2's English scripts, but I'd say Sonic Adventure 2's script and voice acting ekes out Sonic Adventure 1's by just a bit, since it isn't as stilted and awkward as the first games. What I mean is, occasionally, 
There would be an awkward pause between lines and or actions in Sonic Adventure 1, leaving the player hanging, and not in a good way. That and the general slowness of some of the cutscenes make them a bit awkward to observe. This issue is a lot less pronounced than Sonic Adventure 2, and the dialogue is paced and mixed together a lot nicer in my opinion. So, while both games have their share of cheesy but iconic lines, Sonic Adventure 2 is a bit more fluid and cleanly cut. Now, in tackling the gameplay styles and overall design of these games, the fact that they both have pretty different gameplay structures makes it a bit harder to determine which one is superior. Sonic Adventure 1 allows you to choose between six playable characters that are gradually unlocked over time. Each character has their own story, which forms a piece of the overall narrative. Each of these stories vary in length, with Sonic's story being the longest and most elaborate in my experience, and the others being shorter. While this concept of having multiple characters to choose from has a lot of potential, I feel it falls short in some aspects because of the inconsistent quality of these stories. The Sonic levels are the best in my opinion, with a lot of solid level designs and spectacles. The Tails levels are close to that same caliber due to them putting smart variations on the existing Sonic levels, and the Gamma levels add fun shoot 'em up gameplay to them as well. However, some of the other levels can be kind of meh, like Amy's escape levels and the Knuckles search levels, or just downright poor like Big the Cat's fishing levels. While there are definitely some solid levels packed in the game selection, and the side missions adding more replayability, the mediocre and subpar levels bring the overall quality of the gameplay down a peg or two. In addition to the six stories you get to experience as the six different characters, there is also an unlockable seventh story where you play exclusively as Sonic and face off against Chaos using supersonic form. This story is by far the shortest one and acts as a fun coda to the game where you face off against Chaos in their final and most treacherous form. Speaking of Chaos, I think it's time to move on to the game's boss fights. Most of them are either Eggman or Chaos which isn't inherently bad, but it can be a little redundant when you have to fight these same bosses multiple times as the different characters. I'm guessing fighting these same bosses as a different character is supposed to make the way you approach the boss feel different, but all these bosses are so simple that none of the unique abilities possessed by the playable characters are really utilized here, making it feel more superfluous than diverse. Besides the base gameplay, there is also the Chow Garden, a new addition to the Sonic series that allows you to collect and raise Tamagotchi-like creatures called Chow, and have them participate in races. While this feature is expanded and made much better in Sonic Adventure 2, it is serviceable here and allows you to take a quick break from the bustle of the regular game to raise your own little creatures. I think I've said as much as I wanted to say about Sonic Adventure 1's gameplay and design, so I'll move on to the second game. Similar to the first game, Sonic Adventure 2 allows you to pick between different stories viewed through the lens of different characters. The difference here, however, is that there are only two different stories instead of six, and while there are technically six playable characters in this game too, each of the three characters in one story play pretty much the same as the other characters in the other story, so the gameplay diversity is essentially cut in half. The structure of these stories are also different, with each of the two stories focusing on a particular cast of characters that you alternate between as opposed to the first game compartmentalizing each character's gameplay into their own respective story. While the ability to play levels from any character that you want to play as in Sonic Adventure 1 is convenient and more liberating, the previously mentioned quality inconsistencies between the various characters in the first game make the tedious levels stick out way more than in Sonic Adventure 2, since the sluggish levels in that game are offset by the alternating characters, giving players more breathing room instead of having to play consistent levels in a single character's story. I know you can technically exit a character story in Sonic Adventure 1 and switch to a different character to play different levels, but I feel like if you were to do that, you would likely try to play most of the good levels first before going back to the levels you disliked, which doesn't really fix the problem of you still having to tackle a string of poor levels anyway. As I said, this issue is was mitigated with Sonic Adventure 2's alternating character structure, which breaks up the monotony of playing as a single character too often. The different level missions are also in this game as well, which increases the replay value of the levels you enjoy. When it comes to the character gameplay, it's constituted pretty much entirely of the Sonic, Knuckles, and Gamma gameplay of the first game, except the character Gamma is replaced with Tails slash Eggman here. I think this was a good choice, since the different gameplay styles of the characters in Sonic Adventure 1, while diverse, sometimes felt unnecessary and bloated. The second game helps trim the fat. The boss fights in this game are a lot more diverse as well, with each type of character facing off against bosses that cater to their specific playstyles. 
Sonic and Shadow have standard hit and run bosses, Knuckle and Rouge have bosses that make them utilize their flying, climbing, and digging abilities, and Tails and Eggman have slower bosses that make use of their hovering and shooting mechanics. Overall, things are a lot more varied here. There is also a final story in this game, which makes you place each character from both a hero and dark story in order to evoke the final boss and destroy them as Super Sonic and Super Shadow. Overall, this story is pretty fun, but if you were to lose all your lives at any point during the alternating character levels, you would have to start over, which is a little tedious but isn't too surprising since it is, well, the final story. In regards to Sonic Adventure 2's Chao Garden, there are a lot more options this time around, with the addition of Chao Karate, Chao Alignments, Chao Preschool, and more. This is essentially the Chao Garden from the first game, but better and more fleshed out. So I think this game's Chao Garden is superior. All of these gameplay elements considered, while Sonic Adventure 1 has some nifty ideas with its different character campaigns containing unique gameplay, Sonic Adventure 2's collective story system feels a lot more cohesive and consistent compared to the first game, and the character gameplay itself within these stories feels a lot more rounded. That is why, when it comes to gameplay and design aspects, Sonic Adventure 2 takes the cake here. After playing both games for a while in order to really get a feel for the controls, I noticed that Sonic Adventure 1's physics and general fluidity of movement was more responsive to me than Sonic Adventure 2's. While the second game's controls aren't bad and definitely work, I found myself having a hard time cutting some corners and maneuvering at fast speeds with Sonic and Shadow. Additionally, the Tails and Eggman mech levels were very sluggish and awkward compared to the E-102 Gamma stages in the first game, which is unexpected since you think they try and keep the same fluidity in the second game. In regards to Knuckles and Rouge's controls, I don't really have anything to say, since their levels are a lot slower paced and the controls don't hinder the gameplay all too much. Except for the uppercut move possibly, since it can be a little awkward to use it to destroy the floating boxes in the space levels. Even considering some vexing maneuverability issues in Sonic Adventure 1, like Amy's slow movement speed, I think that overall, the first game's controls are superior to the second game's. Now, compared to everything else, it's a bit harder to define the objective quality of these game's stories, since they're both very different and I'm no professional narrative critic, but I'll try my best to give my reasoning behind my choices. Sonic Adventure 1's story, compared to the second game's, is a lot more straightforward you could say, in regards to the fact that it caters more towards a younger audience with its lighthearted Sonic and friends beat Robotnik and evil monster kind of story, and more frivolous story beats overall. The stuff with the Echidna tribe and Chaos and the flashbacks, as well as the endgame where Chaos overpowers Robotnik and destroys the city, is a bit of an exception to this standard simplicity though, with it giving Chaos' motivations more complexity and making them a more formidable villain, but besides these elements, the bulk of the story is somewhat mild. Something that does help diversify the plot structure a bit however, is the inclusion of different narrative viewpoints via the previously mentioned ability to play through the stories of different characters. Sonic Adventure 2 does this as well, but here it's a bit more granular, with there being a story for each individual character instead of a collective story for a group of characters. I'm not entirely sure whether this is a good thing or a bad thing objectively, since each story does have mostly different cutscenes and such. But I personally like the collective story structure of Sonic Adventure 2 better, since it feels more cohesive than six different stories of varying length and quality. Moving on to a brief analysis of Sonic Adventure 2's story, while, on a macro scale, the game's plot can also be viewed as a Sonic and Friends beat Robotnik and Evil Monster type of story, there's a lot more to unpack here, with the inclusion of Shadow, Ark, Gerald Robotnik, and the narrative scaffolding that surround them. The inclusion of Gerald's motivation for wiping out humanity, and how Maria's death affected both him and Shadow, is darker and more elaborate than the stuff we saw in Sonic Adventure 1's plot, which makes this game cater to a more mature audience than the first game, I feel. While there are also some silly, wacky, zany, sonic elements here as well, it's shrouded by a much darker mystery. Overall, both plots are memorable in their own right, but in my opinion, the darker and more complex undertones of Sonic Adventure 2's story are superior to the first game's lighter story. So, in the end, it seems Sonic Adventure 2 came out the better game. However, just because I found Sonic Adventure 2 to be superior for reasons X, Y, and Z, that doesn't mean that I don't think Sonic Adventure 1 is a good game, or that it doesn't have its strong points as well. Both games are classics, and I highly recommend that you try both of them out if you can. This is just my silly little opinion on the games. But that's all I've got to say. I hope that, regardless of what your sentiments on these games are, 
you are able to enjoy my interpretation of these games' pros and cons, and I'm open to critiques as well. I don't think I'm a Sonic professional, so if you have opposing opinions or feel that I didn't do something justice in this video, leave a comment and let me know about it. Anyways, that's all. Stay safe and stay cool.